Okay, welcome to this uh, afternoon's pre-meeting. First order of business would be if any commissioner would like to take any of their agenda items uh, for discussion prior to. I want to look at number 922-286, Budget Consulting Services for Clayton County. Okay. You want to look at it? She want to discuss it. <laughs> I want to discuss it, talk about it, do all of the <laughs> Ms. Merritt, okay. what's your question? Yeah. Oh, okay. So who's going You're fine if it's on. Right Is the mic on? Yes. Oh. Yes. Well, we can wait if you want to do it now. No, no, we, okay. we, we okay. can get the questions out of there. Okay. okay. So um, I'm, just, I'm just asking, as far as this is concerned, um, we're in the process of hiring someone at this time, um, a CFO. So why are we hiring a budget consultant at this time? So while I have full confidence in my staff, I mm -hmm. personally have never done a budget cycle before other mm -hmm. than through my department. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we did is we went to GFOA and got some recommendations of someone who could come in and assist. Mm -hmm. And this would be on an as-needed basis for an hourly rate of like $120, $120 an hour. Mm -hmm. So we could either use them or we can't. So they're just there to kind of help with best practices and to, you know, some bounce some ideas off of them. But I would feel more comfortable not knowing how long the um, process is going to take to get a CFO in space to have someone that I can rely on to assist. Okay. And as far as the CFO position. Commissioner. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, One sec. Ms. Mirror, they can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Come to this microphone. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner. I was just going to say, as far as the CFO position, um, have you all posted that position at this time? As of seven minutes ago. Okay. So, again, <laughs> that's what I said. So, I knew it hadn't been posted, but I just want to know. I, I, but I just want to let you all know. I'd like to hold this for a minute. Let's see. Uh, because, again, the position is posted. It should have been posted two weeks ago, I'm sure. I'm not fussing, but I'm just saying we should have. Uh, we need to go on and post it because we need to go on and hire someone. And waste. I, I'm not. It's, it's a waste of money right now to just to bring in a consultant. If we go on and get someone in place, I know there's a process for this. And like I said, we're lacking because we're behind, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know. Can't, but, so I'm going to ask the board if they if we can hold this, if you don't mind, so we can get someone in place. Can I give you a little bit more feedback? Yes, ma'am. Um, so the reason that I would prefer to go ahead is it is on an as-needed basis. And we are starting the budget process starting next week. Okay. And the, the departments are going to start submitting their budgets sometime around the middle of January. Okay. So I'm thinking this process, even on a quick, if it's done quickly, mm -hmm. will only, will, you know, a minimum of at least a month or so. By that point in time, we are significantly into the budget process. So since they are on an as-needed basis, it's not something that's obligating the county to a monthly fee or anything that they have to be on site for. This mm -hmm. can be a remote thing, but of course it is up to the board. Okay. And let me just add, just through our conversations, the consultant will be as needed, as she said. As so when she, she and the staff come into areas where they're not absolutely sure as to how what direction to move in then this person can give them uh, uh consult with them and make sure that our budget is going to be on time and done correctly okay. and they would give me um a comfort zone of having someone to bounce ideas off of and to get some best practices from as well okay. um, they are based out of texas and they do come highly recommended by gfoa um, who is the one that does our budget presentation award every year okay. So, but this, again, it's up to the board. Is this what they primarily do? This is, they, they primarily come in and help um, counties with budgeting or managing accounting of the finance areas. And the, the specific people who are, that we have um, got the resumes on for this task have um, experience as budget managers, county managers, CFOs. And for me, I really would like to see this pushed through simply because even if we hire somebody, they'll probably give two weeks notice and then it's probably going to be 30 or 45 or more days uh, beyond that to even get a viable candidate. 
and then we're well into the budget cycle. I got that, Chairman, but we're two weeks behind. We should have been put in for Clear on that. We should have been put in for a CFO. We talked about this before my dad passed. So, you know, this is something that, you know, we said we were going to be on. And like I said, wasting money, doing other things, we need to focus on the prize. And the prize is to make sure that we get someone sitting in that seat. We've lollygagged long enough, and it's time to move forward. Well, they are moving forward. Like I said, they, the only well, I, issue is they're seeking help to make I sure that the budget is that. done I, right. I, I'm not going to say we aren't moving. We should, we should, that position should have been posted. That's the bottom line. Okay. Thank you. Uh, were you finished with questions? No, I'm sure. I'm finished. Did, oh, did you have any questions, Ms. Uh, Hamber? Okay. Commissioner Hamber? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any others? All right. Well, let's go into our presentations. First one's comprehensive uh, plan, five-year update. Mr. Ajiki. Yes, sir. Chairman, uh, Madam Vice Chair, Commissioner, good evening. I had to look up before I say commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have two presentations this evening. Uh, the first one uh, is about the comprehensive plan, and the other one is about code enforcement. And our esteemed assistant director, Ms. Brooks, is going to be presenting the comprehensive plan presentation. Then I'll take the code enforcement one. Thank you, sir.
Good afternoon, Chairman, Commissioners. Our apologies. So I'm here today to present the 2034 Comprehensive Plan five-year update. As you may know, um, this is a mandated update by DCA in order to keep our um, status as a qualified local entity. So this basically is a high-level, long-range document that guides growth and manage change in the community. As I stated before, it's required to maintain our qualified local government status, and that's related to funding opportunities, grants, and things of that nature. Um, and it must be updated every five years. Within that, the last time we updated was in October of 2019, and it usually covers um, community goals, assets, uh, broadband, uh, particularly land use, and the next update is due October the 31st of 2024. We are going to be focusing on uh, projects that, the, that support the land use um, as it relates to the comprehensive plan. And one of the things that we noticed is that we had a lot of plans that we have done over the course, one of them being the MARTA TOD study that we have recently done. We're slated to begin the LCI study with the Terra Boulevard. And we want to incorporate those studies into the comprehensive plan as it pertains to that. So our real goal is the next steps is to be able to submit all the required RFP documents to central services on the first week of January the, um, 2023. And those documents will send to central services in order to be able to put an RFP out for um, consultant services by March of 2023. This gives us a whole year because we wanted the notice to proceed to start on May the 23rd of 2023. This gives us a whole year basically to do the work. And we want to be above the curve, not behind the curve. So that gives us a whole year to get all the documents, get all of the studies done, uh, work with transportation and development, work with all the departments that's necessary to make a cohesive plan for the community. And we want community participation to be key. So we want to give that time so that we get that input necessary. By doing that, we have a whole year by next of May the 2024, um, by that time, we could be able to submit, submit the information from the consultants by June of 2024, which that helps to go through the ARC process because ARC is heavily involved in comprehensive plan. This allows us to then go by July of 2024 to the BOC process. That means going through ZAG, it's going through the community information meetings. And then so by the time August comes around, will be way ahead of the schedule for adoption with the BOC. Therefore, we can submit it back to ARC by October the 24th, which is the deadline. By October the 24th is the complete deadline for this comprehensive plan to be updated. So this is just to put it on the radar, get in front of the curve, and to let you know that we're going to put it in our budget um, for this year and work with central services to see what those numbers look like by the time that we get to the budgetary year so you know what that looks like and this gives us an opportunity to really um, dig deep and look at what Clayton County is and what it's trying to be and put it in a cohesive plan. Any questions? Commissioner Hamburg? Uh, yes. Can changes or additions be made? Correct. At that time, we are looking at the comprehensive plan. We're going to look at changes that need to be made, things that we hear from the community, the things that we hear from stakeholders, the commissioners, and really dive deep into making our work plan, because within comprehensive plans are work plans that actually tell us what, how to lead, what steps we need to take in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. So yes, we are looking to ch um, make changes if necessary. All right, thank you for your presentation. Thank Ms. you.
Our next pre presentation is about code enforcement. As you know, we continue to uh, do our best and model through solving code enforcement issues in the county. Uh, one of the discussions is to consolidate all code enforcement actions in one department. Um, there is a slight confusion right now. We deal the way we structure in community development don't quite allow that centralization to happen. So this presentation is to kind of shed some light on what we are thinking and how we think is, uh, is best handled. So we have traditional code enforcement and we have code enforcement in community development that we deemed active project site quality compliance. It is what we issued permit or license for is what we are paying attention for. Code enforcement is post-construction type activities, and it gets confused sometimes. So we want, the idea is to consolidate code enforcement in one department. Then we can focus on those active project sites type enforcement that we do on a daily basis. Um, so, code enforcement, as is generally understood, it's is to enforce codes in the built environment. That means the construction is done, the CEOs have been obtained, and other things that are under the quality of life. It is an enforcement that's after the land development and building phases. While active project site quality compliance, it's when the Board of Commissioners, say for example in zoning, have conditions. There are things we need to pay attention, uh, attention to while the construction is still going on. There are disputes that we get involved with um, that we need to deal with. That is what we have um, this, um, co our, what is tradition, what we know or what everybody knows as the code of enforcement in my department, in, in community development right now, that's really what they do 90% of the time. We do all that, but it's confusing because the citizens, the folks who are calling, sometimes do not know how to call and when they call, you have to send them to somewhere else. So, but active project site quality compliance, our project site quality compliance for zoning, exterior finished materials, landscape installation, and new business locations, and everything else in between. So, the plan here is, uh, come on, slow down, yeah. The plan here is to transfer two code enforcement officers from community development department to corrections department, including all trucks, all the equipment that they use. Then we, we have one position that we're going to keep back in community development department and we're going to reclassify it. Currently, it's a code enforcement officer, but we're going to reclassified appropriately to quality compliance officer so that it represents exactly what they do. This person is the person that goes to check on trees. This person goes to most of the things that we do that is not really traditional code enforcement. That's what they do. That's what this person is um, going to be doing. So we are hoping that the board um, approves dates so that we can move forward and hopefully complete the consolidation and be able to um, make sure that those functions as we are describing, I don't see code enforcement here today. Um, this is actually should have been a joint, a joint presentation because if you look at the first slide, it said it's alts and correct and uh, and corrections department, but I don't see anybody here from corrections. Deputy, mm -hmm. Deputy Warden. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So that's the 
um, idea behind this to further streamline and have folks who are calling to centralize where they call. So that is what the um, presentation is about. Deputy Warden, Amy, do you want to in interject anything into the conversation? Good afternoon, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, I totally agree uh, with him. We want to put all the code enforcement in one centralized uh, location. Therefore, we can oversee the entire uh, code enforcement uh, there with the prison. And uh, we just feel it, uh, consolidating like that will be best for the entire county. We started off with the uh, residential. It has went very well. We've learned a lot, a lot uh, about code enforcement, this and that, and we think just putting everybody in one centralized location will move the county forward. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the board members? Yeah, will that include the commercial uh, code people? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? That's on uh, GK's uh, presentation also, right? Which one are you talking about? Uh, it's, it's, it's the same as far thing. as questions, I'm yes, asking we're, we're because you mentioned a quality control control person. Uh, yes, um, the quality control person will be dealing with all the active permits licenses that we do. Um, they will deal with um, zoning matters and and things like that. That's what they will deal with. But they will also, if code needed assistance. That's the person, that would be their contact person, income youth development department. Because sometimes there might be some information in our system they don't have access to that they might call to get access to. So that person will serve as a liaison as yes. well. So what they're doing, uh, Commissioner Hambrick, is there's three positions, if I'm hearing right. Yes. Two is two will transfer over to corrections. One will remain and be reclassified under community development. Yes. Two. Yes, serve Chairman. as this uh, liaison yes. slash community uh, compliance, compliance officer. The compliance officer. Okay, so when we have citizens or constituents that uh, call or send letters or complaints or whatever regarding group homes, so where will they go now? Will code they go enforcement. To correction? They'll go to code enforcement. Everybody goes to code enforcement. Okay, so what will your quality person be doing? All active, active permits that are going on. All active permits. What kind of permits? Active permits. Active permit is is quality compliance. When we issue a permit, right, it doesn't always go smoothly. There's always things going on. Um, they will be responsible for going to go make sure. Say if we issue a permit and they have conditions. They need to do landscape. They have to go do that. If there are any uh, tree issues on the site, um, if we get a call that a sign permit has fallen, then they go make sure the sign permit is put back um, correctly or if it's supposed to be there or not. So they're dealing with things that are active within our process. Okay, so this per your quality person then is going to be an arborist also? Uh, we do have a position, an arborist, that we're trying to hire. Everybody that I interviewed always wants the uh, salary to be increased, which we don't do. Yeah. So, <laughs> do we have so, one for the county? Yeah, we, uh, we do have um, a position for arborist. Oh, but we don't have a person. We don't have any person in it, and I'm the, the de facto arborist. Okay, so, now back to your quality person. Okay, now supposedly group homes, and we're going to be getting into this as far as permits a concern. The, 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 I guess for them to operate legally in the county, they're supposed to come to you, uh, come to community development for a permit or a license or whatever. Okay, but now you're saying that they're going to be going over to correction. The, the way it works, the way I think, the way it should work is this. The community calls 
and complaints about a group home right. in their community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They call code enforcement. Okay. The, the liaison, let me use that word, the liaison, they call the liaison and say, hey, does this person have a license to run this group home in this community? And they say, no, you don't have a mm -hmm. license. Uh, then that is, then they take it up from there and do their code enforcement action. Or if they go there and ask the person, where well, you duly permitted to do this? They say, no, they say, you need to go see community development department to make sure if you're supposed to be there or not. Okay, now you know where we are with some of these complaints I'm getting with a couple of communities and all, and they are, they are past that stage. They are past the permit stage because these companies don't have the permits. They go in these houses, they build off rooms and put the uh, locks or whatever on individual locks. Now that's code, and that's gonna be code enforcement. That's gonna be code enforcement. Okay, and when the, at the stage we are now, we know they, they're not licensed. So yeah. what steps? after that are going to be taken, does that come back to you for your quality person? No. Uh, what happened is that the, the issue we have in the county that the commissioner is um, referencing, it's where conglomerates, big businesses, buy structures and further split them without even a permit. We're going to put all of that, the one, as the, one of the companies called Pad Split, they do this without a permit. They don't even get a business license or get a permit. They just go and do it. That will still be code enforcement. Well, code enforcement, what we're trying to figure out is the best way to do those enforcements. The, the process is to figure out how do we hold them responsible. We are issuing, we've been issuing citation to the owners of past split, we mail them because they're not within our, um, they're not even within the state. So we mail them. But all this, code enforcement has better tools and better knowledge of code enforcement than we do. Okay, so what kind of tools? Because right now, we have, I mean, this has already been done. The business has already done this. They've blocked off the rooms and they are, they're already in uh, operation. So how do, we, how do we stop this at this point? I mean, what can we do? Because right now, they're continuing to do business. They're continuing yeah. to have people rent these spaces, 20 folk in a house or whatever. Each one has a room. And we know that they are not licensed, that they don't have a permit. What do we do? The, the, quality, of life, um, the quality of Life Committee is looking at how to strengthen our current code. What can we do short of evicting people? We had a community meeting one evening, Commissioner, that we, I actually uh, followed up with legal about what we discussed in that community meeting, talking about ways of how we can strengthen the code. How far can we go? As you know, we're trying not to get into, we're trying to enforce, we turn around and get sued. We're trying to figure out the best way to strengthen our code to yield the results that we desire. So it's something that's still being discussed. Um, there are no clear answers to it, but the solution or the solution get at least better than it is right now have to be in the code because the, the key is how do we evict the folks who are, who are there renting illegally? How do we do that? So it sounds like right now, it just sounds like we're passing the problem from community development over to corrections. Uh, and nobody has a solution uh, of how to handle this. I mean, this is a problem. I understand, Commissioner, but if you look at the percentage of code enforcement actions that we have, part, part, split, uh, part split and group homes and that are not really the majority of it. It's not, it's, as we discuss code enforcement in the county, structurally and operationally, centralizing it in one place 
it's a better idea. So, so have you all had this discussion with corrections to let them know what we are going through with that problem? Yes, ma'am. That's um, that's what what I turned around. I didn't I didn't recognize that he was there. Yeah, there was it was a discussion that we had with the department with the COO before I showed up this evening. Okay, so okay, with where we are now with the communities that we know are having this problem. What's going to be different over in corrections than what you all have done? Because you know, one of these communities we've been working, we've been back and forth for about three or four years pre-pandemic. Let me just say that. And what's the way it is right now? As we speak, we still got to figure out what legally can we do to address the problem. It's a legal matter right now. We, we, the problem is defined. We know what the problem is. We know what they're not doing. The tools we have are not quite adequate to deal, to accomplish our desired results. Because personally, my desired result is to tell everybody in that house, yeah, get out don't have a permit. and get out and lock up the door. But I mean, the owners, I, I can see us going after the owners because uh, the people that are there don't know what's going we, on. We are doing that. We are going after the owners. We are mailing them citation to magistrate court. If they don't show up, they will have a bench warrant on them. That if they ever show up within our jurisdiction and have any reason to be stopped, they're going to get picked up. So that's. OK, so we won't prolong this. Can we get together, you know, yes. development, mm -hmm. corrections, the attorney, uh, whoever else? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, because I want to, you know what I mentioned to you, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. do a meeting with Chuck and I people. spoke, and you and Chuck spoke. The next step now is to, um, like I promised in that meeting, that call the Quality of Life Committee so that all the key players in the county right. that usually attend the Quality of Life Committee are there and... You, we invite you to that meeting so you can hear all the efforts that we are making to we'll solve. We'll talk. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. Soon. We'll talk soon. All right. That was the last presentation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That was the last presentation. Seeing no others before us, we stand adjourned till 6.30. Oh, we could have talked.